The Ryzen 3300X is easily one of the best gaming CPUs that you can buy right now, considering the price point. Four cores, eight threads, and some of the fastest boost clocks that you'll see on Zen 2. Despite it being just 120 US dollars, there's no reason that you couldn't pair this with an RTX 2070 Super or 5700 XT. And so today we're going to see how you can make sure that you're getting the full performance out of Ryzen 3000, and specifically the 3300X that we're using today as an example. And one of the big focuses here is going to be on cooling, because despite the 3300X just being a 65 watt quad core processor it does run fairly warm and that does impact performance probably a bit more than you think. We'll also take a look at varying DDR4 memory speeds and the impact there, whether the CPU overclocking is worth it, and also generally how to make sure your system is running up to spec. Firstly, before we dive into the tuning details, there are a couple of things that I'll mention that are probably fairly obvious to most of you, but can be easily overlooked by beginners and could impact the performance of your Ryzen system significantly. First up, do not use a Windows 10 boot drive from a previous machine, especially if it's from an Intel build or an older AMD platform. Even though your new Ryzen build might accept this drive, it'll get you far from optimal results and may even give you stability issues in some programs. The only case where this seems to be fine is when upgrading within the same platform, for example from a first gen Ryzen build to a second or third gen where you're also upgrading the motherboard as well. Of course if you're just upgrading your CPU and dropping it into the same motherboard there is nothing to worry about. And another obvious but undimensioned one is making sure that you've installed the latest chipset drivers and BIOS version for your motherboard. I've seen this improve the power profile and boosting behavior of Ryzen 3000 significantly so it's a good idea to keep up to date. Also a good idea to make sure that you've got the correct power profile selected. That'll make sure that your system doesn't turn into a jet engine every time you wanna open File Explorer. When it comes to choosing a memory kit, the short answer is a low latency 3000 to 3200 megahertz kit is going to give you the best value for a processor like the 3300X. You will see performance gains up to 3600 megahertz kits, although performance does start to level off there. At 3600 megahertz and below, the fabric clock and memory clock will be coupled, whereas memory speeds above 3600 megahertz require the decoupling of the fabric clock and the memory clock. What this means is that there will be an increase in latency now, which actually results in lower performance despite running a higher speed kit. So a 3200 megahertz CL15 kit is a good place to start and make sure to check the motherboard vendor's QVL list to make sure that the kit that you're buying is validated at those speeds for your board. A low latency 3600 megahertz kit will give you optimal results, but might be only worth it for those buying a 3700X and above because they are a bit more pricey. And even if you can't budget for a 3600 megahertz memory kit, you can usually squeeze a little bit more performance out of a 3000 to 3200 megahertz kit with manually overclocking. This usually involves increasing the DRAM voltage to around 1.4 to 1.5 volts, granted you have a memory kit that scales with volts voltage and then either tightening the timings or increasing the speed or a combination of both if you're lucky. Memory overclocking is a lot more complex than those couple of steps and in most cases will only net you a few FPS in gaming at most and worst case will introduce instability to your system. Still though it is worth mentioning because it does technically improve performance in most tasks. And yes while you can overclock the fabric clock it's just generally not worth your time. You might be able to get plus 100 mega if you desperately want to run a 3800 MHz memory kit, just be careful of the additional instability. Now let's talk about the Ryzen 3300X specifically, because the biggest challenge that most users are going to have with this CPU is cooling, especially if you're going to be using the stock cooler. Now, if you happen to use this CPU for things like video editing and 3D rendering, which isn't such an unrealistic scenario because it is a quad core eight threaded processor, then you will definitely run into some thermal challenges and likely you will see the 3300X hit around 80 to 85C, in some cases above 90C. The sample that I've got here did top out at 80C during a blender render, but this is on an open test bench with just an 18 degrees C ambient room temp. So if you add a few degrees to bring the ambient room temp up to something normal like 22C and then another
another few degrees when installed into a case, things will start getting pretty toasty. Even in gaming, things are going to be on the warmer end, even when not fully utilized. Again, if you're installing this CPU and cooler inside a budget case with less than ideal airflow, not to mention with the graphics card also heating up the case interior, it's easy to see that many 3300X systems out there are running fairly hot. Now, the main reason that the 3300X runs as hot as it does is that it packs all four of its cores into a single core complex die, or CCD for short, as opposed to the Ryzen 3100, which splits four cores across two CCDs. But despite the much warmer thermals on the 3300X, it is actually the better choice over the 3100 based on performance, because separating those cores among separate CCDs results in higher core-to-core -core latency. As an example, when both the 3100 and 3300X are at the same clock speed, the 3300X is the better performer but runs significantly hotter. And I would consider this very important background info if you have a 3300X because arguably one of the best things that you can do to improve performance of your Ryzen 3000 CPU is to improve your CPU thermals. Zen 2 responds fairly drastically to CPU thermals and the cooler that you can get your CPU to run, the faster it will run. And we're talking sometimes a shift of 200 megahertz or more. For example, swapping the stock Wraith Stealth Cooler for a 240mm AIO, although it doesn't make sense from a budget perspective for the 3300X, it does give us a massive boost in clock speed of around 200 megahertz. That'll definitely shave off some time when it comes to renders or video exports, and might give you a few more FPS depending on the game. So when it comes to CPUs like the 3900X and 3950X, the answer is pretty simple. Pair them with a top of the line air cooler or high end aftermarket liquid cooler because thermals do matter evidently and you likely have the budget for it if you're buying a Ryzen 9 CPU. That recommendation though doesn't really work with the $120 Ryzen 3300X because then you're spending more on the cooler than you are on the processor itself. Even if you pair the CPU with a $50 single tower air cooler, you're now approaching Ryzen 3600 pricing and that would be the better choice. Now you could lower the PPT or power target in Ryzen Master Software that does force the 3300X to pull less juice and in return output lower thermals, but it will also reduce the clock speed directly. So I only recommend lowering the PPT as a last resort if your 3300X or other Ryzen CPU is overheating and you can't budget or fit a stronger cooling solution. And although undervolting can give you huge success on GPUs and Intel CPUs, manually reducing just the voltage for Ryzen 3000 introduces nothing but problems and it should definitely be avoided. I was able to get a negative offset of minus 75 millivolts on our MSI B550 Tomahawk without any noticeable loss in performance, but it just didn't seem to do anything significant. Voltage offsets larger than this resulted in significant performance drops, so I don't consider this an option. So, Ryzen 3000 performance scales directly with CPU thermals. The cooler that you can get your system to run, the faster it will run. But the only option that you have to do that is by upgrading your CPU cooler or moving to a higher airflow case or by adding case fans to your system. Unfortunately, there just aren't any tweaks or adjustments that you can do to voltage and power as workarounds. For the 3300X, one of the best performance upgrades that you can do, apart from a decent memory kit, is pair it with a decent but still affordable cooling solution. Even upgrading to a $30 Hyper 212 will be worth it over the stock Wraith Stealth, and I'll leave a link to that and a couple others down below. In terms of overclocking the 3300X, anything lower than an all-core frequency of 4.4 GHz isn't worth it for gaming, seeing as it naturally boosts above that. You will get a nice boost in production workloads, seeing as the all-core frequency will be lifted from around 4.1, depending on which cooler you're using, but in gaming, even at 4.4, there are minor gains to be had for the trade-off of increased power and thermals. In my case, 4.4 GHz required around 1.36 volts on the MSI B550 Tomahawk, and it's impossible to cool that with the stock cooler. In closing, there are a lot of factors that can impact the performance of a Ryzen 3000 based system, and the 3300X specifically is a tricky one because it benefits tremendously with additional cooling, but at the same time, that additional cooling can be more expensive than the CPU itself. And 
of course, a lot of these factors apply to all of the Ryzen 3000 CPUs anyway, especially when it comes to memory speeds. So feel free to use this checklist for other Ryzen 3000 CPUs. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.